Hi everyone. Welcome to Cards and Coffee. It is Wednesday at almost noon. <laughs> I know I'm a little bit early today, but I have to go pick up my daughter from day camp at 12. So I'm just going to jump on a little bit early here today and thank you to all of you who may be joining me today. If you're online, just say a little hello. Let me know who's watching. If you're watching the replay, just hit hashtag replay in the comments so I know that you've watched and enjoyed the video today. Like I said in my description, we are going to be pulling out Pale Papaya, which Amy, if you're on here, you are going to totally expect. Actually, I have been staying away from Pale Papaya just because everyone knows I love it so much and I'm trying not to <laughs> focus on it. But seriously, this designer series paper, the hand pen designer series paper, let me just grab it here. I actually hardly have any of it left. I have used it so much, but the colors in this are totally up my alley. I love everything about this designer series paper. Sorry, I had some stuff stuck together. And so let me just give you a quick little whirl of what I have left. This is the one side here with these pale papaya polka dots, which I love. Then on the back side are just some coordinating flowers. And then there's this page here, which we're gonna actually use today. And on the back side, again, it's one side has a really kind of nice floral watercolory pattern that coordinates with the hand pen suite. And there's a stamp set that really pulls out these flowers that coordinates with it. Um, and then let's see, this one is yellow. This is also really pretty. So on the back side, you've got more of a solid color with this all watercolored a little bit. So if you can see, there's some texture in there some look and then just a really basic pattern over top so they're quite subtle on the one side and then the other side are all coordinating flower patterns so this one here has the fresh frieza or actually it might be blushing bride and then midnight misty moonlight and then I don't know what the yellow is I can't remember but this beautiful um soft succulent and some more coordinating colors there. Let's see what else we got. And then there's this beautiful fresh freesia color here on the back. Pretty, isn't it? Anyways, there's a quick glimpse at some of the designer series paper that's in the hand pen suite. And I love it. I especially love, again, here's a solid pink with the flowers in here. I love some of these solid colors on the back, the watercolored ones that are mixed in with the white patterns. I think they're just really stunning. And today we're going to play with this a little bit. And like I said, with the pale papaya as sort of our backdrop. But this designer series paper and eight other designer series paper are actually on sale until the end of the month. So 15% off. And you can see more about that on at my online shop at Serlin stamps.stampinup.net. So head on over there if you live in Canada and I would love to, um, help you out with your order. Anyways, let's get started here. So what we have, I've got a few different pieces here. I've got some of that hand penned designer series paper, and this is actually the full card front length. So this measures four and a quarter by five and a half, just our standard card size here in Canada. We have a card base that measures eight and a half by five and a half. I have a piece of black here, and I can't remember what I cut this as. This is three three and an eighth by four and two eighths. So three and an eighth by four and two eighths. And then this one here, actually, I've already chopped it up, but what it was is it's one sheet of designer series paper that I chopped, and I'll show you that a little bit more. Um, and just like this, and I've cut it in the middle and then cut off one inch on either end. And then we've got a piece of pale papaya here that would equal, I guess, three by four and one eighth or four and a quarter. Three by four and a quarter. There we go. All right, so you've got your dimensions of what we're looking for. And then I also just have a scrap of black, which we're going to put our sentiment on today. So let's put our card together really quickly here. Again, on Wednesdays when we get together for cards and coffee, uh, this is intended just to make a fast, fun, quick and easy card together over our lunch hour. So nothing overly complicated but show you how you can make something studying really easily, which is a few basic supplies. I mean, Stampin' Up! has such beautiful supplies, especially their designer series paper, which make it really easy to craft something or put it together really quickly. And if you use the colors that are in the designer series paper, you can come up with your color scheme really quickly as well. So what I've done here is I folded my card, 
base in half, not very well because I see it's not even lined up. Let me just try that again. There we go, using my bone folder. And I am going to cover the whole front of my card with this pale papaya polka dot. And so I'm using Stamp and Seal. You could use the liquid Tombow glue or multi, what is that stuff called now? Um, yeah, it's Tombow, multi, liquid glue. Um, so you could use that, you could use the Stamp and Seal Plus, whatever you have on hand works just fine. So we're gonna fit this right over top the whole front of our card as best as we can. All right, let's just smooth that on and we've got that ready to go. And I love it just like this. I mean, I could just put a label on here with a sentiment and be done. I think this is just the prettiest paper ever. What we're going to do though is we're gonna pull in our other pieces of paper. I've got my black and I wanna adhere my pale papaya right on top of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, add some of my stamp and seal on here. Now if you find that you have a little bit of trouble getting your stamp and seal to go, one of the best ways to do that is when you put your first strip on is that follow right behind it. So where it's just a tiny bit sticky, if you start there, it's gonna pull your tape so that you don't end up, sometimes it just, it doesn't quite catch on the paper and then you just kind of have to feed it forward. But if you're starting where it's already sticky, it's going to go on really easily and really smoothly. Now putting this black on top of my black mat, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing here, but I think I did okay. All right, so I put the pale papaya on, and if you can see, it just has like one and a sixteenth sort of black border around. It's just really subtle to kind of make it pop run there. It's not meant to sort of detract. I think sometimes if we get too much black on our card, especially with these soft colors, um, it sometimes can look really harsh. But if you can see what this is, just going to make it kind of pop out so that we don't lose the pale papaya on our card. Like, look how pretty that is already. But we want to bring in some more of that gorgeous designer series paper. So I am going to take this. And like I said, I had one piece of designer series paper like so. And I'm just, just let me get the measurements for you. It is two and three quarters by four is what I cut it. And then I literally cut it right down the middle lengthwise here. And then I cut one inch at the top. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to do a little bit of paper piecing. So we're going to kind of um, alternate this so that one side I'm just gonna flip it over because I know that the front and the back of the designer series paper matches and actually I really like this one right here that has sort of a little bit of a faded part on it because of the watercolor so I'm gonna use that piece and then I'm gonna flip over this one I just think that that watercolor piece in there I don't know I just like it so we're going to go like so so you'll flip over one of the long pieces, so you've got alternating patterns, flip over one of the short pieces, and just line them up beside each other, and that is what we're going to put on the front of our card. You can see how quickly and easily this comes together uh, once you sort of have kind of your measurements. And so one of the great things about cards and coffee is that if you're keeping track of, um, you're keeping track of the layouts that we do, they're just really easy to sort of change up with different patterns, different paper, and you can make whole new cards in seconds. So if you can see, I didn't quite do that right. I want to center this a little bit better. I'm going to take this off very carefully without ripping my paper. So sometimes when I stick it down, I just put it down very gently because I know, oh yeah, no, I did that right. I thought I stuck the wrong side of the paper. I know that it sticks down pretty good and I don't want to, I want to make sure I got it in the right spot before I kind of commit. So I think that that looks kind of centered. If you can see all the way around here, I've got an equal border. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down like so. And because of the way I cut it, I know that if this border and this border are the same, that it's going to be the same on the side as well because my piece, this piece of paper is a cut to that dimension so that I'm gonna have an equal border. So that's how I judge mine, is sort of top and side border the same all the way around. I know that the other side is going to work as well. And because I've got this edge of the paper to line up against, I can be pretty confident that I'm gonna get it on here nice and straight. Pretty confident. But again, let's just look at it before we commit. I think it looks good. And I've got my paper butt up right against, butted up. Is that the word? I've got my paper butted up? I don't know. <laughs> I've got them next to each other, right up against each other. I'm not sure what the word is. <laughs> um, 
so that there's no pale papaya showing through in the middle. Now this one, I want to make sure it lines up at the top. So I'm going to just stick it down like that. Okay, we've got this piece in place. So now what we need to do is we need to stamp our sentiment. So because we're making a quick card today, I have chosen to use my Whisper White um, Craft Ink Pad. So this is going to stamp, Craft Ink kind of sits on top of your paper so it doesn't soak in sort of like our uh, classic inks do. So you can use this on dark colored cardstock and it's gonna show up white. So the reason I'm gonna use this is like I said, we're doing a quick card today. If I wanted to, I could also emboss this, heat emboss this in white or gold or whatever color I wanted to. Um, but when you're in a hurry and you're trying to do things quickly, the craft ink is a great alternative. And actually it looks really beautiful. The difference is if you emboss it, you're gonna get a little bit more of a sharp image than you will with the soft craft ink, but it's gonna look lovely and you'll see. So I'm using the Quiet Meadow Cling Stamp Set here. This is um, a new one in this year's annual catalog. And I am going to pull out this stamp set or this stamp here that says Thinking of You. You could use your Too Kind for this layout or you could change up the label that we're gonna use and use any of the other sentiments on here as well. You could alternate this with a, um, a circle or another square, whatever you want to do. We're going to just use a rectangle shape today. So I'm going to stamp this up. If you saw, we just kind of tap, 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 and then I'm gonna just try and stamp it down here. Now I'm gonna freehand cut it. You could use your um, trimmer as well if you wanted to make sure you were straight, but given that we are just going to be um, cutting out a small piece here, I think we're gonna be okay. And I can kind of follow the top of these letters to make sure I'm straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just freehand it here. I'm not too worried if it's not 100% straight in this case, I think it's gonna look lovely. All right, let's give it a trim off here, and then I can just trim it up once I see it on my card. So if you see this, I see on the top, I went a little bit closer than on the bottom, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the bottom as well. Following my stamp. Now the crafting, you do have to be a little bit careful because it takes a minute to dry. So if I start rubbing this too much, I'm going to smear my ink. Um, but I think it'll be okay. All right, so we've got this piece. It's going to go right across here where our seams join. And I could either just leave it long like that or I could cut it down to fit over top of just the designer series paper. But I actually think I like it like that. What do you guys think? I think I'll just leave it like that. And then we're going to adhere this on top. Now, normally on our Wednesday cards, we don't use quite as many layers. We're trying to do something quite quick and easy. We just sort of use a couple layers and more stamping. But because we wanted this really to highlight this designer series paper today, I wanted to make sure it had a nice crisp border to make that pop. And I think we succeeded. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know. Do you guys have a favorite? Like, are you guys in love with this designer series paper as much as I am? I love the colors in this designer series paper. So again, I'm just going to add some regular seal on the back. And again, because we have so many layers, I don't really want to pop anything up on dimensionals. What happens when you end up with more than a couple sort of um, heavy layers is that all of a sudden it doesn't fit through the mail as standard postage anymore. So I really try to stick to only a few, a few layers. All right, we're going to go like that. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and add that with the seal. Now you could pop some ribbon on here or something to add a little bit more interest, but I actually, I really, really want the designer series paper to sort of be the focus of this card. And I think it looks lovely just how it is. Can you guys see that? See how the white is? It's sort of a, a subtle. And if you've seen my previous video, um, you would have watched sort of the chalkboard technique. And this is sort of how you did that. We just stamped with classic ink, sorry, craft ink, on top of black and it gives you sort of the look of a chalkboard and it's just kind of soft and subtle and beautiful anyways happy stamping thank you for joining me here on Wednesday remember that the designer series paper sale is only on until the end of July so you've got about another week -ish, a week ish <laughs> to get in there and get using it I have a lot of other ideas over 
on my Facebook channel as well as YouTube. I have show, put a post up there recently um, about how to make your own coordinating envelopes. So if you haven't seen that, go over there and take a peek. This was a really easy project that we made together um, to make coordinating envelopes for your cards out of designer series paper. And I also put in there a fancy fold last night, which was for a drapery card. Now let's see, where is my drapery card? It's right over here, let me grab it. So if you haven't seen that card either, go on over and see how this beautiful drapery fold card was made with the designer series paper. So there's lots of great ideas over there this month with the designer series paper. Take a peek, let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything that you would like to see. If you have a question about one of the designer series paper, I'm happy to show it to you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me and uh, we will talk again soon. Bye.